Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Whatever time of day this is for you. Later on in the morning for me. It's me, Wingish New Baby, Jackie Quay. Your friendly, freaky ass, sweet grass water medicine woman. Christiane Carr, Chris Carr, Jupiter. All this beautiful, fine being right here. Yeah, see this? It says, what's next? Not that I'm inviting it in. What's next for the good stuff that's coming, right? I can feel the good things coming, coming. Got to clean out all this other stuff too. I'm excited to have my kids back. This is it's it's hard. They have learned some not so great things. Their mom trying to just get to answers, not destroy anything, not you know, right? Not putting out their story is their story to tell. I didn't go around screaming off rooftops or anything. Not like what their father did. As in a spiteful thing, but that says something right there. Right? You heard what's going on? Where'd you hear that from? How was it presented to you? Did you hear from me? I'm saying stuff on here. I always worry about other people and their reputation. Well, enough of that. I've been hurt lots, and I'm a human being. I'm a human being. <laughs> Under pressure? And what happens to human beings? Under pressure. Especially when they're dreams, when they're big slowly. It's like torture. Left in this, I don't know what's gonna happen. Because there's things that mean a whole lot more to me than it does to some people. To some people, it's about winning, it's not really about what's best. Oh. Nice. There's my boy. Hello. Beautiful, loving Liam. He's an amazing young man. I'm so proud of him. I'm so hard what we're going through. It's not nice. Not nice. Do you need a little bit of this to again? Yeah, please. Thank you. You're welcome. We used to do this stuff every morning, but that's where part we get made fun of and whatever. I love you so much. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's just the pain. I'm always okay even when I don't feel that way. Okay. You don't need to worry about your mom. That's not your job. Okay. Okay. Just listen to your mom. <laughs> no, no, right? Just always be honest. That's all we can do. That's all we can do. Always be honest. Always be true, right? Right. The family comes first, especially. We have to have communication in there. We have to honor our parents. We always have to tell the truth and live with that integrity. Because look at when you... Trying to keep secrets and hide stuff in families, it destroys families. Mm. Absolutely. More, right? No, the family is carrying on destroyed one and left one out. Anyways, anyways, I'm in the middle of the video, darling, so please, I'm already triggered. I'm trying to bring myself down, and I don't want you to take it personally. Were you waiting for one of these? Yes, I couple of, get some water. couple of these? Okay, by the time you come back, then they'll be spread out. You can take a couple if you like, okay? Okay. So I waited for you earlier, but that's the thing. I'm a slow poke, right? People keep wanting me to hurry up, but then leave me waiting. <laughs> get upset with me if I get upset about that. Not them personally. You don't have to hang around there, darling, please. You know, mom is not the that, 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 that kind of person. So please stop reacting to me like that. You know, when you act, react to a person like they're crazy and they're not, then you know. It's like saying to a person, don't be so defensive. You're defensive as soon as you say, I'm not defensive. I say I'm not a fighter, but then I feel like I'm caught up in this fighting about fighting that I'm not a fighter. <laughs> so I get caught up fighting that I don't want to fight, you know? Dog, please. A human being. So much stuff going on. What do you do? Ah! It is too much. And I think I'm too much. It's not I'm too much. I'm dealing with too much. I've taken on too much. 
That's why I like to say, you know, people don't take it on. Don't take on my stuff because I don't want anybody feeling burdened by my stuff. It's my responsibility. You know, I'll say the kind of support that I need. Just having people that says they're there, that I can call. I know there's somebody there. I can check in, whatever, and I will do that when I need to. I'll try and work it out all myself because I know we've all got stuff going on, and I don't want to trigger you, and, you know, so I keep to myself. I'll do this. This really hurts. Right? Spiritual family, aim high, right? Aim high. If you shoot for the stars, you're going to fall among them. Damn it. Just feels like my children have been totally alienated from me. Whether it's they've been told that, oh, your poor mom or whatever. The way they react to me is like they react to me like with a pity or with just the annoyance or like, you know. The way I've seen some kids go disrespectful to the addict parent. And you know, it's not the addict's fault. It's those other ones that are showing these kids not how to have compassion. What are we doing to our children? We're desensitizing them to humans. Going, oh, it's all their fault. And we're not taking accountability for maybe what we did or said that might have done something right we be accountable we do something to hurt somebody's feelings and we say we're sorry we take responsibility for that not go oh it's your fault your feelings are hurt because i didn't mean to hurt you please just walk right by darling okay because okay. that just messes then it's a distraction i don't know if you want to say something i'm trying to focus here okay, okay. mom is not a blah 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 okay? okay you don't have to be constantly at me okay Thank you. I love you very much because I just don't want you to feel bad. I don't want you to feel like I'm biting your head off when you just want to make sure mom's okay. But when I'm trying to focus, I'm, I'm working. You're actually, right? My camera's recording and uh, I'm talking to my subscribers. Anybody watching? You see him waving there? He just doesn't know what to do. And my poor kids. My poor kids. Confidence in themselves. All right? I love you too. Now I gotta get back to work. You're gonna get me fired. <laughs> I love you so much, darling. <sighs> right? We get caught up and then it's trying to take care of me. And you know what? That's not me. So that drives me nuts. That's these other people that kind of need constant reassurance and constant ego boosting and you're doing so great and blah, 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 blah. And constant, you know. No, oh, I poured it all out. There's no gratitude. Everybody just sitting there with their hands out, you know? I learned a long time ago. If they're just sitting there with their hands out, I'm not going to expect anything back from them. So if I give to them, I'm purely giving with no expectation of any kind, not even a thank you. I've dealt with many people like that in my life. And I've learned. Not so many people saying, oh, why do you let them walk all over you? Whatever. Well, you know what? I'm gonna, not going to change who I am. I just went through a thing. I love like I've never been hurt. Every time it's like the first time. All brand new. All puppy love. I love that about myself. I'm never going to let that go. I don't care. All through my life. I play, you know what? Well, I've had friends. I've had healthy relationships. I've had relationships where I'm still friends with those exes. You know, testify if you wanted them. <laughs> uh, right? Because it's nobody's fault. If we're not, you know compatible anymore or whatever growing in different whatever right i've heard this this conscious uncoupling who, who who did that was that um gwyneth paltrow or something like that sort of this trend conscious uncoupling like it doesn't have to be fighting you know my daughter wanted to go home wednesday and like it doesn't have to be an argument you know we can just talk you know you don't have to whether it's because that makes us feel better or whatever right not everything has to end in arguments. It's bad. We can peacefully. Well, all right, okay. Well, we, we don't want to destroy each other. This is we're not bringing out the best in each other. So, you know, what kind of example is this for our children? Let's let's kind of separate. Try and do the best co-parenting we can be, so the kids can see. Be an example for them. Not everything works out. Maybe we jump into things too fast. Maybe we expect so much from the other one. I don't know. Where I've gotten where I don't expect anything. I've gotten myself turned. Like, I'm happy with just the crumbs and all that. I'll buy myself. I'm still a human being. I'm still a human being. 
<laughs> and it's not the adult. It's when it comes. It's with my children. I cry. Children, people hurting their mother, people making their mother something that she's not, and them even having, being with me thinking it's true. Your mom's a big cry baby, so let's do something, even though they don't see me cry. My eldest goes to him, you know, oh, mom's crying, oh, she cries all the time. So, right, let's make them desensitized to mom, right? Mom. Let's not treat mom like human. Mom's supposed to be superpowers. You're supposed to be doing everything, picking up everything as they drop them, doting along behind them, telling them everything to say and do, and controlling their every move. But that's not the kind of mom that I am. Not that unlimited vision. I want them to have that unlimited vision for themselves. So I'm bracing the unknown. I don't know what kind of people they're going to turn out to be. I don't know how this is going to affect them. You know? Is their unlimited visions, creator's unlimited vision for them. Not mine. I gotta embrace that unknown. Being without my kids, my dream. That was my biggest dream. More than any career or anything like that, I have a peaceful, loving family. I have a place like Aunt Carolina and Uncle Greg's way. I saw that. A safe place. Haven, a safe place, a healing place for the family, loved ones. No matter where there's a place to go, you can just show up on the door or just come have a tea, whatever. If I'm not here, stroll around the backyard. And that's my biggest dream, bigger than anything, bigger than being a crazy car, superstar. place and peace right we come laugh at ourselves and come be playful I don't play games I am playful but I don't play games especially with people especially with human beings and we're fragile we are we're fragile little babies here <laughs> We do it does enough damage to ourselves we don't need to go fring and throwing shit at each other right Right? Think about it. We're all in this together, right? We gotta use our integrity impeccably because what we do, you know, what you're doing to me, you're also doing to you. It all comes around. We're in the cycles of things. You know, I don't go out seeking revenge or whatever because I know. Right? Creator's got this because Creator knows way better than I do. So I just leave that all up in Creator's hands. I don't pray for any any kind of harm to anybody. Pray for lots of love. God, send them so much love so they're happy so they can just leave me alone. If they don't want me, then fine. You don't need to destroy me. And you know what? I gotta not give my power away like that. So I keep praying in for more. I am human. <laughs> okay. I gotta go for my EEG soon. That's why I was trying to get this in quick. I have to be there in just a little over an hour. It's not till 11, so we're good. So, <sighs> let's go. Woo! Little quickie. No, it's not that quick anymore, is it? <sighs> Excuse me for your waterfalls. Calling back all of our energies from the east. Path of illumination and clarity. Place of fire. Place of man. Calling back all of our energies from the south. That's the childhood, the waters, the emotions. The place of innocence. All my children are innocent. My children did not overwhelm me. My children did not do any of this to me. This is all results of adults playing games. For their own whatever, whatever. I don't know. Why would you do this to children? Never mind. Why would you do this to those children you say you love? Why not help and support their mother instead of destroying their mother, making them feel ashamed of the mother that they have? Making them feel like they can't trust the mom that they have? 
Well, yeah, because moms are human, so they see the emotions mom's going through here. Well, people are off their distance, but they can still poke. They still have an effect, but they act like they're all innocent. Oh, we're not even there. But they won't take things about sending strangers to my door, talking about my private stuff? A stranger? At my, uh, judging me in my own yard. You know, people got to start taking responsibility for what they've done. I am a human that has reacted and responded. Reacted and then tried to calm down and respond to what's going on around here. Going, this is absolute bullshit. How do I turn this into fertilizer now? How am I going to help my kids if I can't get myself off the ground because my body has just been... Blah, 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 with all this stress and all this stuff coming at it that I can't. Hmm. Right? So nobody's considering, nobody's looking at actual medical diagnoses of what's going on in this physical body. The stress. There is heart issues. I need to be careful of that. And it's not that I'm going to have a heart attack. Right? My blood pressure is so low. My blood, could, my, my heart could just go, that's it, I'm stopping. Drop dead. Okay, that's the extreme thing of this low blood pressure, the vasovagal syncope due to low blood pressure. Diagnosed. Cardiologist tells me have salt on everything. But that's not taken seriously. And then the adults are staying away while the kids are here. So this is where these tears come up. That fear. Trying to control myself and my emotions to keep myself calm so I can keep my children's mother here so my children don't have to grow up the rest of their lives without a mother because mother is a human being that cracked that 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 was killed by that pressure I wouldn't take my own life there's no way no absolutely no way I would ever do that. That doesn't even cross my mind. That would hurt others. <laughs> I wouldn't want anybody to blame themselves for that. And even if I did, drop dead. Because my heart can't take it anymore. Once I really wouldn't want to be my kids. Because the way this is all going on about saying that mom can't handle her kids. What a horrible thing. It is not my children. My children do not overwhelm me. No, it's what my children have been dragged into. It's how my children have been used as pawns. Whether consciously or unconsciously, adults need to become aware of what they're doing and how they alienate from other parents, right? I had to become aware of it myself so that I'm not doing it because I definitely do not want to do that. I don't care. Even if I hated the man, I would not be alienating my children from them. That, that is still part of them. I would honor that always and tell them to honor that in them as well. And I do, absolutely do, always have. That's the way I was raised too. He's sick. Whatever it is, I don't know. Whatever it is. Still, an adult needs to take responsibility and stop projecting shit onto our children. Me too. I do too. And I take it back. I'm under pressure. Forgive me, mom's human. It's not you guys. It's not your fault. It is absolutely not your fault. Over and over again, it is not their fault. It is not the children's fault. It is not the children's fault. The children are not responsible for the adults. The adults are responsible for the children. And the adults are responsible to make sure they get their facts clear before they go taking such strong stances. When they think they're standing up for children, when they, they don't have the full story. Because you didn't go. To get the whole story. You didn't go to see somebody in their face. Look them in the eye. Give them a hug. When that's all they were asking for. Y'all got to live with that. Y'all got to live with what you did. So do I. So do my children. We all got to live. With the mistakes you made. You made the mistakes. Because even everybody thought I did the right thing. I did the right thing. 
with what was told to me. I took the right steps as a responsible mother. Somebody didn't like it. Somebody had something to hide. That's what happens. Somebody's got something to hide, right? He even posted it himself. The, the lie is already around the world while the truth is still putting on its shoes. I still haven't even tied the first shoe. Anyways, called back all the energies from the east. Who called back all the energies from the cell? Childhood, the emotions, the innocence. <sighs> Calling back all the energies from the west. That's the earth, the physical, the woman. Place of introspection. When we look inside of ourselves, take responsibility for our own selves. <sighs> and we call back all of the energies from the north. The air, the wisdom years, mental. Walk our red road, our earth walk goes from the south in childhood where hopefully we got that nurturing. But if we didn't, as adults, we're 100% responsible to nurture that little inside and not project that on everybody else because we didn't get what we want. We had this rough childhood. Excuse us, we all, in some part, right? Hmm. There's some people that just like to get locked into what they didn't get and then they try to take it back. Not take. We need to receive, right? That nurturing. We need to give that nurturing to ourselves so we're not going and taking it from everybody else. And hopefully, we're giving that to our children. And we're not expecting our children to nurture us. It's not my job, my children's job to come take care of me. You know, and I think that's where I've kind of... My daughter would come up, how about this? Blah, 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 right? And I was upset. I don't want them taking on that responsibility. I said, it's not your job, baby, I'm me. They do make me so happy. So I can see, even though my attention wasn't, you know, my intention was to show her that she didn't have to be responsible. My intention was to not do to her what was done to me. But I felt I had to protect my mother. <laughs> that if my mother saw how much I was hurting or I didn't want her to worry about me, it was a mixture, right? It was a mixture. I wanted that attention. I saw her give to everybody else. You know, I complained about strep throat when I was, that was that, you know. No, not strep throat. I was uh, got ice cream when they got tonsils out, so I wanted to get my tonsils out. And I actually had strep throat. She didn't believe me because I had said about strep throat all the time. But there was that mixture, right? I'd be playing sick because either there was bullies at school or at the start there because I didn't, I didn't know what was going to happen to my mom. I didn't want to leave my mom. It's six years old, right? I remember that. Feeling I was my mom's protector. I don't want my children to feel that way. I don't want my children to feel responsible for me. I don't want my children to feel guilty like they were too much for me. Oh my God. My children are not too much for me. Yeah. There were some adults who were way too much for me. Two in particular. Two in particular were way too much for me. Expected way too much of me, put way too much on me. But I took it. So I share in that responsibility. It's not all their fault. It's not about a blame. It's not about a blame. This is just facts. It's just facts. It's my responsibility to heal that, though. That's mine. That's mine. I take full responsibility for me and my children. Well, no, that with my children, what's going on, that's shared responsibility. And it's not just me and the father that has to uh, step up to the plate and friggin make amends with this shit to help these children. Help these children repair their relationship with their mother. You help to interfere with it. You need to help repair it. But you don't have to. It's not required, right? That's up to me. And my children, if they're willing. But if they've been so alienated that they're not even open to even... They just shut me out like everybody else, like they've seen the examples before. What's that going to do for the kids? Hmm. Try to 
child just wanted to connect with their mother. I don't mean it in an ego way at all. We all need our mothers. And there's a feel of rejection. Anyways. Um, so nurturing. Hopefully we get that nurturing. Hopefully we're giving that to ourselves now. I need to do that. It's, it's, it's my job to do that. It's not my kids to nurture me. My job to nurture them. Up in the wisdom here. Say, then come change my diapers. I already told them I wasn't going to deny them that. <laughs> No, it's not a burden. It's the natural order of things. I changed all their bumps, so if they want to come and help me change my bump, I'm not expecting it of them, but I'm not going to deny them that rite of passage. <laughs> We're going to switch it around. Vision quest, seeking and finding. That's where we get up there, right? Knowing who we are, and we can look back and go, wow, am I that reflection of my parents, or am I a reflection of the divine? Am I a reflection of my family and broken cycles and this broken society and whatever? Or am I a reflection of perfection of the divine, right? Practice progressively perfects. We're not going to, but, but we are made in that likeness. So we are made in the image of perfection, right? Maybe we could look at it that way. I don't know. But what are you reflecting? What are you putting out into that world? Right? Are you reflecting that love and that light of the higher source? Are you projecting your pain? Right? Let's look at that. I invite you to. I'm not going to be bossy. It's up to you. East to west is the blue road of spirit. That's the record keeper. Right? We can tap into that spirit. There's that morning star. We can look deep inside and see. That's how we know when we get up to those wizards. Are we repeating cycles? Are we opening up to that divine? Right? Because in our DNA, every little cell is a real record. We have time, future, whatever, whatever, right? That's the record keeper. DNA, our cells, there's a whole universe right in your own cells. Right? They can be anything. Oh, my Bruce Lipton, what he's done in the studies that he's found, right? We're informed from the outside. It tells the stuff on the inside what that is. Whatever that is. That's going in. That deep dive inside. That whale can do that deep dive. But it still needs to come up for air. Right? We don't want to do that deep dive and stay down there and get drowned in it all. We still need to come up for air. And that's okay. You take that breath. And yeah, okay, creator, come with me again. Down we go. Whatever that is for you to clear out. To clear out. Maybe make way. Maybe it's hard for that lotus to get up through the mud. So you got to clear something. Maybe there's a rock where he was. So you got to kind of move shit over. Whatever. I don't know. East to west is the blue road of spirit in the west, right? That's the empowerment, that, that connection, that earth connection. As we would pray for that peace, we go, whoa, we walk, we put our tobacco down, prayers up, whatever that is, however that is for you. Find that power place that's inside that you don't need to go to anywhere physically we can go to those power places in our mind we can connect with that spirit we do those deep dives in here and we can clear up issues things that we're hanging on to we can release those things and get the empowerment instead of power over take that time to breathe to come up for a breath of fresh air when things are just getting too deep what is that for you above below and within so I'm gonna spread them around from this side coming from the west introspection well ouch my neck and everything so sore all so tight time we at here 949 okay that's good not too far away to get to the hospital. I didn't have to stay up all night. Oh. It's... No. Right now. My boys got enough time with me. They didn't get interfered with as early as my girl did. They haven't had that time. I'm with my own mother in a way that's God. Only that mother-daughter relationship. Wanting to connect with other girls and women. 
I think I crave that even more than a man, right? Um, I want that loving partner, but that's something where, you know, I get along with the guys. I've always felt more accepted by the guys than, you know, and a lot of times because I was one of the guys and, you know, I didn't get a whole lot of, I was bullied. I was the ugly dog in school and stuff like that, right? So even my first crushes, they <laughs> Play kissing tag in green one. And I was all excited, he was chasing me. <laughs> and I go to, you know, get away and hide behind the bike racks. <laughs> oh, yeah, so hard to get. <laughs> well, he kicked me and said, There's your kiss. <laughs> well, that way. But I always had the brothers, so that was fine. It was just the buddies. I'm just. You know, and I found sometimes with my girlfriends, I felt like Sarah get boyfriend. You come sit on my lap, whatever. It was fine. That was just me. I've always been more. I've always thought more like a, a guy than a girl. Again, I don't know. That's, I mean, I've so many times heard I should have been a man. I should have been a boy. Blah, 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 blah. How <laughs> many times I heard that? Which was fine, but that was, I guess, maybe that was my protection. I don't know. I don't know. Anyways, that's what gets me. It's really tough with my girl. I've had that time, that connection with my boys, and I see that they know that I love them. But my girl... The one and only... These people think they did the right thing. They think they did what was best for the kids. I don't blame them. I feel they felt like I was going crazy. Still do. What human does it when they're feeling? They're trying to say, um, I'm help. This is what's going on. Help me. This is what's happening in me. And they, no, it's not. No. Or they ignore you. No, we know what's really going on with you. You can't tell us any different. Yeah, we don't care that you live inside of you and you feel all your feelings. No, we know. We can read your mind. Whatever. I don't know. I don't know. I just know it's not fair to my children. It's not fair to me, but you know what? I can go on. I can move on. I can. Hey, I got to leave everything behind. I got used to it as a kid. We had to just go. Running, right? You just have to leave stuff behind. You can't. You can't take it all with you. I don't want to leave me. Adults gotta start taking their responsibilities. Let me tell you. They gotta start making up for what they did to my kids. What they did to my kids, okay? I did this stuff to myself, thinking I could trust these people. Trusting the wrong people. Being vulnerable with the wrong people, because they just wanna take advantage of you. And then toss you when you say, hey, I'm human too. Oh shit, we didn't want you to realize you're human. Out you go to the curb. We destroy you. <sighs> Thank you. Overall, just let's look at this, okay? We're doing that introspection. I'm going to 
take one from over here. The animal medicine that helps us get that clarity over here from the east. That talking stick, viewpoints and options. We all have those, right? And we all, especially when it comes to children, right? They're going to look at these viewpoints and options. Well, I'm looking at it from this one side. Have I gone to see all of that yet? Have I taken little snapshots and applied it across the board to say this is what happens all every day? Hmm. What, what is that? Was there other options she could have taken but didn't? Hmm. Were you listening? Because that talking stick, that's about, that's honoring too. It's not just about talking. It's about honoring when somebody is holding that talking stick or feather or rock, whatever. We sit, we sit, we sit in that circle. Everybody's equal. And the one who has that stick is talking. And there's no cross-talking. You don't chime in with your advice. We listen. So that talking stick isn't just about talking. It's about listening. Reciprocity, is that what that is? Back and forth. It's a teacher. Whoa! 15, 15. We talk to teach, right? Listening, we learn. But if we're talking, we're not listening. You can't listen if you're talking, right? <laughs> Two ears, one mouth. Hmm. Then we need to go to teachers and teach us and go again and ask those questions. And then we listen when that teacher is talking. And everything, everything in life is a teacher to us. What is these things going on in your life right now teaching you? What are the lessons coming through to you? What are those options? Have you limited yourself? Have you limited yourself with options? No, I have to do it this way because this is just the way we've always done it. This is the way my family does it. This is what we do. Right? Or, hey, I've already gone this far. I can't back out now. What is that as well, right? That sometimes we get caught up in it. We put in all this time and effort that, oh, I can't, I can't pull out of it now because, hey, or maybe we stay firm. We stay firm in a decision or this option, viewpoints, and we don't even, we close ourselves off. We're not open to being teach, taught, whatever. <laughs> Opening to see it in a different way, seeing another's viewpoint, seeing that there was another option we could have taken. So what do we learn from all of this? And what are we teaching to our children that are watching? What are we teaching? Whether it's from what we're saying or what we're doing. Whether it's from what we tell them. Right? Is it with the truth? Are we coming from the truth? Are we teaching when we know the truth? Or are we teaching just what we think is happening? Hmm? Are we making, taking options and choosing things just from our own point of view? From what we've been told? Maybe somebody's trying to teach you how to view somebody, right? And maybe that's not in the highest and best interest. I don't know. Not everybody that says they care about you has your best interest at heart. I don't know. Let's reflect. Let's get deeper into that. What's that saying? What are you saying there? We're trying to teach us here. Creator, all the relations, these viewpoints and options we have here in our lives. It's our lives teaching us. Maybe that the view, you know, the views we've had, how, how have they changed? Did you one time hold a view? And now that's changed because you've got some new information. You learned something new. What was that? Now that view changed. You know, maybe you didn't see this option before because you had these blinders on. And then you take this off and you go, whoa, I didn't have to keep going in this direction. I could go down this road. I don't have to fall down that hole in the sidewalk again. I can take another direction to get to the same place. Many, many paths to the same destination. So we're reflecting on that, that creative energy that comes in with that when we take that time to reflect. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. 
out. We're looking at that, that ability to respond. So if we look at that, we're seeing, we're looking at those options. Okay, is this all that we have? Have I looked at it at every angle? Sometimes we can overanalyze too, right? But we do want to take that breath before we get too deep. So we have that ability to respond, right? And these things and, you know, these choices have helped us to grow or what's holding us back. That's what we need to learn. What holds us back? How do we hold ourselves back? How do we keep reacting instead of responding to what's happening, right? Do we react with aggressiveness? Because sometimes, right, we meet fighting with fighting. Well, who's going to put us out? I've said that before. So how do you respond to that aggressiveness when you're being attacked? We do need to stand up for ourselves. We do need to have boundaries. We do need to teach people how to treat us. And how have we taught people how to treat us? We teach people how to treat us by what we accept. Oh, I accept it a lot. I accept it a lot because I just wanted to be loved. I just wanted to be accepted myself. By more than just creator. I wanted to feel accepted and loved by human beings as much as I love them. I have ability to respond to that. I can be aggressive, keep getting angry, and it has come out, and that's not me. It feels so far away from me. Being such a peaceful person, I don't like to yell or anything. It's me getting traumatized even more than my kids. But what that's going to do, they're watching their mother, and they're blaming themselves because it's all said through that mom's overwhelmed by parenting. Mom can't handle her kid. It's not their fault. <laughs> Please stop telling them their mom can't handle them. If you're saying that, I don't know. <laughs> Kids have never been a problem for me. Ever. Kids are wonderful. They're amazing. Children learn what they live. They're copying behaviors. None of these behaviors originated in any of my children. It's what they have seen and what they have witnessed. What they have witnessed their mom allowing be done to her too. Witnessing their mom just shutting up because if it gets too much, okay, I'm the first one to quiet. I do not like the fight. And if it seems like it, it's, you know, you've got a stronger opinion or whatever on that, I'm going to let it go. Fine. It's not up to me to change your opinion. Even your opinions about me. Okay? What you think about me, really, it's none of my business. It's none of my business what you think. What's really important is what I think about myself. The creator thinks of me. I know creator loves me. So really what it comes down to, and that's what I tell my kids all the time, you're the one that's going to look at you in the mirror. It doesn't matter what anybody else thinks. The most important opinion of you is yours. Right? Because we're going to live up to our own opinion of ourselves. Really? Maybe. I don't know. How's that for you? So what's that action that we take? Oh, maybe to release that re aggressiveness because we're looking at the ways we're responding and maybe where we've responded aggressively. Maybe we need to change it into assertiveness. Or maybe we need it to be a little more aggressive, a little more firm, going, you're not going to push this boundary. This line is staying right here. Right? Aggressively hold your ground. Right? It's not coming after anybody, but you're like, right? It's a red rover, red rover, and you can't break the chain. I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> okay, so. And then we take those actions from there. We're reflecting on that. These viewpoints and options, and where do we act from? Because maybe, you know, we've only acted from one way because we saw, we've only been taught this one way. We've only been taught aggression. We've been taught we got to fight for what we got to talk. You got to get out and grab it. Like, look at the way society goes. Society is about aggression. You go, you reach and get it, you know, step on all those heads, whatever. Don't let anything get in your way. Look at all those other teachers that taught the gentler way. Look at the impacts they've had on the world. And they didn't destroy the world. They added to it they brought peace in and they did it in a peaceful way without fighting we've had examples of both where aggression gets us where peace gets us so what do we do then
know what we do what actions we take a cook belly that's the fertility we let it be birthed through us what is that that's wanting to be born is it a new viewpoint a new option right maybe we're starting to learn something new and then then that's coming up right we've done all this studying we're t it's time to implement that it's time to respond time to take that action get out there dance sing <laughs> Attend those crops, whatever that is for you, right? And that 13, 14, 15, we are taking those as steps. That was 27, 29. We'll be able to laugh at ourselves because maybe we fell. Oh man, we fell for it. Maybe we fell for our own stuff and thought we're horrible. I know I did. Maybe I am a horrible mother. Oh, I'm just so horrible. Maybe I'm not. Oh, 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 it's true. We can laugh at ourselves. Maybe I didn't have an ego as a human being. I think I think I totally did this as a mom. I knew like when they were in there, I changed everything I did. I quit smoking. I, you know, it was the best diet I ever had. I took care of myself the best because then I was sharing this body. There was another body growing in there. <laughs> I'm taking care of myself still for somebody else. This, and to do stuff just for myself, just for myself. That's, that's selfish. <laughs> we even had those babies. It wasn't so I could get that unconditional love. So I had somebody to unconditionally love me. It's to bring that peaceful people in the world. But there's that trickster. Because I thought, I still thought that that love would be unconditional. And I know I love unconditional. I'm not feeling that back from me, even from my kids, but that's where I trick myself too. Because they do love me, they do care about me, but they've been confused. They've been torn. They've been told so many different viewpoints and options. That's not their mother. But it gets in that it covers over their own personal experience with their mother. Because the stuff that they're being told can be seen like true. Like mom is nitpicky. Blah, 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 blah. Like when I've said like, okay, it used to be like I didn't cry over spilled milk. But it's because of the pain and all that, right? That now the messes became overwhelming, right? And I can't. And I don't want my kids to feel. But in those ways, it made those things seem true, right? Nothing's ever good enough for your mom, blah, 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 right? But it wasn't about that. You know, or when they'd say something, I'd say, okay, well, this is what you need to do to make up for it. Somebody would say, oh, just go give her a hug and say, sorry. And i say, no, I told you that wasn't it. And then they go, ah, right? And then it's mom's fault because this one said that's all they had to do. Right? So whatever that is for you, look at that in your own lives. These things, you know, what have you been taught? Is there something in your life you've only been taught one way, right? So you don't think you have any options, right? You're stuck in this one viewpoint, this one option, whatever that is, right? And how do you respond to that? Are you feeling, you know, ha? Ah! Is it like somebody's aggressive with you? Are you aggressive with somebody else? What is that for you? Have a look. What's being birthed through you? How do you respond to that? Do you laugh at yourself? Hey, what did you fall for? Look at that coyote right there again. Nice. I split it up at the, did you see that? The wisdom years. That's that gratitude. Look at that. Coyote, once again, that innocence. Those innocent little babies. Were these innocent little babies? Where their children are too. They're just going to pick up their juicy little sponges. They're going to soak up everything. And look at the aggression we see on TV that this is just normally a fight and fight and fight. What happened to the play? Being playful. Some kids get so serious today. Kids are so stressed out. They're getting, you know, early onset adult diseases because the diets are bad. We're passing on our bad habits. Instead of those good ones. Teaching them those good ones. Right? Modeling that for them. Children will do what we do, not what we say. They follow our lead. That's the innocence. And your inner child is innocent too. Maybe someone to protect it. Maybe it got abandoned. 
whatever that was in your in your experience of childhood how was that for 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 you right how did it go you do um right how did that how did that go for you in your childhood how you know what 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 did you have a good childhood? Was it not so good, right? Do you blame others for that? Do you blame your parents still when you is an adult now and you is 100% responsible? That messenger, right? What's the messages from your childhood? That poor people, innocence, innocence, innocence. The children are innocent. It's us adults projecting on them. So let's look at that. Let's look how we projected on an innocent mother as well. Where it was made to look like this is what mom was doing when mom was only trying to protect her children. Mother, mother, always. The children come first. They're my priorities. It's not the adults' feelings and reputations. That's about the kids. The kids. Always. I care more about my children than your reputation. I'm sorry. That's your responsibility. If you care about your reputation, whatever. How about your character? What's your character saying about you? Hmm. And is that just the character you're playing? Or is that really true? Do you live from that wholeness? Do you live from the innocence of who you are? Do you see everybody else as that innocent baby too? Or do you go blame them? Go blame them. Hmm? I don't know. What's that? What's your options? Are you limiting yourself? Ah, 12, 13, 14, 50, 15. Look at that. That's cool. Well, just taking those steps and those deep dives. What steps did you take to help? What steps have you taken that hurt? You know, can you take accountability for that? Can you be responsible, responsible for the damages you caused? Or how you didn't help when you were trying to help, right? Do you give away unsolicited advice? Hmm, maybe we need to give that away that we think we know best for somebody else. Maybe we need to give away that we have to go get our say and put in our two cents in something that has nothing to do with us. Hmm, give it away if you think you know better. Give it away if you think you know the best option for somebody else. Or you have something to teach somebody. Remember? Okay, the teacher can choose what they teach. They have no control over what the student learns. We don't know what anybody is here to learn, what creator has set up for them, what they, you know, discuss with their creator to do. So give that away, right? Give it away. And another way, too, about your stories and sharing your stories, that's another way others can learn from that, too. Because as we're talking and we're sharing, and in those circles, it's not about giving advice to each other. It's about hearing your story coming out of somebody else's mouth. And going, wow, right? Honoring that. And seeing that maybe that gave you a different viewpoint or options that you never see. Because in them telling their story, which really sounds like your story, they did something different that you didn't even thought. They didn't, you know, you didn't even think that was an option. Now you know. Now your options have opened up. And it's not because that person said, I know what you need to do. You go do this. They didn't give you unsolicited advice and tell you their opinion on your life. You know, they were just sharing their story, giving away, laying down their burdens here at the sacred altar in the fire to be cleansed by creator. And they help somebody else. That's the, that's the deepest kinds of healing, right? Right? Because 95% of healing is just having your story witnessed without being hurt. It's not getting advice. Oh, that one's sideways. Right? That's that rebirth. It's being reborn into that. Into an ability to respond. Right? Instead of reacting. We have the ability to respond instead of react. So that sun is coming up here in that female side. Look at that. We need to balance that. Male energy and the feminine energy. The acting and the doing. Right? So I'm going to sit back and receive not time to be aggressive. Early stage of adeptship. The sun, the rebirth of the living spirit. Being reborn that we're not just, not just these physical bodies. We're innocent babies. 
We're the youngest here on this planet. Right? And we need to keep being reborn into that peace. We're the ones that keep losing our way. The rest of the animals, the rest of creation, they just do what they were designed to do. Us, we get caught up and try to say, no, 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 you were designed to do this. And we try to tell everybody else what they need to do and not focus within. It all begins within. Right? Otherwise, we're protect projecting all of your shit. Right? You gotta wipe your own ass, man. Woman. Lover. Lover. Whatever you identify with, that's it. That's you. That's your own personal. And it doesn't matter. It's nobody else's. Everybody everybody will have an opinion option. It doesn't matter. The one that matters most is you. You're the one that's looking at you in the mirror. You're the one that's going to be with you your whole life. You're the one that you cannot escape. And why would you want to? Don't you want to like that person that you spend the most of your life with? Hmm? Right? And expanding that knowledge. Appreciate Apprentice of Stones. So that's what we're doing. We're going and learning more. Okay, we're being born. We're, we've tricked her that there was only this one way. We're laughing at ourselves. And now we're going to go out and learn. We're going to talk to others. We're going to share our knowledge and what we've learned. Hmm? As we go and sit in a circle where we're all equal. And as we listen, we expand our knowledge. Just by listening to those stories. By sharing our stories. And we... Start changing that knowledge into wisdom. Because knowledge with the experience turns into wisdom. Right? That's the ascension. There's the star. There's the star. And we're all the stars. Right? 17. Look at that. We got all... Is there a 16 in there? No, that's a 19. Then we got 12, 13, 14, 15... Uh-huh. 17, 19. There we go. What's this one? <gasps> oh, journey of love. Bringing that back to ourselves. That love in ourselves. The love for our children. Whatever that is. Seeing that innocence in all. Balancing the male and female in us. Not thinking we know better for somebody else. Because you know what? We need to look at our own lives. Pluck the log out of thine own eye. Pluck the log out of thine own eye before you go... Pointing out the speck of dust in somebody else's. Whatever that is. The journey of love to you. Home to yourself. Home to wholeness. Journey of love. You know, we want to help those children's help. The mothers. Help the parents to be the best parents they can be. Help the parents heal the inner child and, and see themselves as innocent too. That they were doing the best that they can do with what they knew how. With what the options that they had. This is how he was raised. This is what I'm passing on. Until we know different, we're not going to do any different. Until we know better, we're not going to do any better. You know, and if you know better, then you should be doing better. Whatever that is for you. So have a look at that today. Return, return to that innocence. Look at all as innocent. And especially these children. These children are innocent. They did nothing to their mother. Okay, children don't hurt the parents. It's the other way around. We are responsible for our children. Their children are not responsible for us. And if they're doing something that we don't like, we need to look at ourselves first. Oh, where'd they pick that up? Where did we pick that up? We have to take that good heart on us, look at ourselves and see. Did I pass that on? Did they, did they get that from me? Oh, no, I didn't know they was looking. Oh, I didn't know they was listening. Whoops, I got to show a different example then. Oh, I'm sorry you saw that from me. I didn't want you to see that example, but you have. Ha, huh, human being over here. And I'm going to work hard to change that. And then they see you working at that, changing it. They see you taking responsibility. They'll see you praying or whatever that is. They'll see the innocence in themselves. They're not going to blame themselves. We're going to reach out. Let's laugh together. Let's be silly that we take life so seriously. That we sit in our shit. We roll around in the shit and all that. Let me just want to transmute it, make it into fertilizer. Wow, this is a long one today, but very important. So thanks for listening. Thanks for hanging in there. And, you know, remember, you're an innocent baby. We all belong here. Absolutely, it's true. So shine your light out like only you can. Biggest heart hugs ever. Woo! Thank you for being you. Shining your light through with everything you do. Because you know what? This world really needs you. 
these children, especially those little innocent babies inside. If you're an adult, you're 100% responsible to take care of that little inside. It's not mom, dad's fault, nobody's fault over here anymore. You're the adult now.